Hi everyone, this is Drew Dinkmeyer with DailyRoto.com and I'm here to talk through a tutorial on our customizable projections. This is something that we've released starting for the 2016 NFL season. We're really excited with this product release and we think it'll add a lot of value to subscribers who are interested in not only having our default projections and understanding the process that goes into them, but being able to customize their own projections with different edits or default adjustments that they'd like to make to see how different game situations play out and how that would affect affect individual fantasy performances and production. So going over to our customizable projection, you will find an export button on our main projections page for our NFL projections. It will say export customizable XLS. You click on that and in the bottom left hand corner of your screen most likely, Excel will populate a file that you can open up. So you'll need Excel to be able to work with this, but once you do, you'll have a data template that allows you to adjust projections. Now at first look, this might be a little bit intimidating. There's a lot of information here, but let's walk through it. We'll go through all four of the tabs that we have, projection baselines, week one play estimates, projections, and D special teams projections. So we'll start with the projection baselines tab. You'll notice every team is accounted for here. If you scroll down on the left, you'll see all the different teams. And within these teams, you'll see players listed, the position they play, their projected FanDuel points, DraftKings points, and then all these other headers. Now, anything that's highlighted in yellow is something that you can edit. And when you edit, it will give a different projection. So it'll change the output of FanDuel and DraftKings points. So let's go through what each of these headers mean. MSPA stands for market share of pass attempts. Typically, this is just going to be the starting quarterback you're going to allocate 100% of the passing attempts to. But if for some reason there was a situation where you wanted to test out how a quarterback split would look amongst the different quarterbacks, that's something you can do. For the most part, though, you'll want this to be 100% allocated to whichever quarterback you're choosing is starting in that, in that game. MS Rush is the market share of rush attempts. So the market share of carries that a player would have on their team. You can see in this particular instance, we're giving David Johnson 65% of the team carries. And if you change this, you can see it adjusts his production. It will also tally at the bottom uh, of each team. You'll have a tally that should show 100%. You can go above 100% to uh, look at upside of all the different individuals if you wanted to at once, but it'll also note you in red uh, here. It'll have some conditional formatting that lets you know, hey, you're over 100%. You might want to reallocate that 5% you just added to David Johnson, maybe take it away from Chris Johnson. And you can see as you're doing that, the DK points and the FanDuel points will update. So after market share of rush attempts, we have yards per carry. This is where if you want to adjust how effective the player is going to be, you can go through that process. So if you think David Johnson is facing a particularly difficult run defense this week and you wanted to take him down to 4.3 yards per carry instead of 4.6, you can see the adjustment in the individual projection. The next column over is MS targets. This is the market share of targets. So of the total pass attempts, what percentage is going to go to each individual player? You can see here for the Cardinals, we have 23.5% projected for Michael Floyd in week one. If you thought, for example, because John Brown has dealt with concussions in the preseason and Larry Fitzgerald has been battling injury issues as well during the preseason, that Michael Floyd was going to be a focal point of the offense in week one, you could bump him up to, say, 27% and see what impact it has on his projection. And again, you'll get the reminder here that you are over 100%. The next category is yards per target. This is just like yards per carry, but this is on a per target basis for wide receivers. And this gives you a better idea of how effective a player could be. Again, if you think they have an individually difficult matchup or a really easy matchup, you can inflate. Let's say you think John Brown is facing a weak cornerback this week. You can inflate him up to 9.5 yards per target and see how the adjustments move. You could also take players down like Michael Floyd. Let's Say you think 9.4 is too high for Michael Floyd. Our projections are too aggressive. Take him down, the projection will come down. The next category is reception rate. This is simply the percentage of targets that the player secures as a reception. So you'll see players that tend to, get, tend to be uh, getting their, their targets around the line of scrimmage tend to have higher reception rates. Running backs tend to be higher than wide receivers and so on. Players that work deep down the field tend to have lower reception rates, but you can adjust these as you go as well. Next column over is interception rate. This is only going to be applicable to quarterbacks, but this is the percentage of pass attempts that result in an interception. 
you can change this and as this changes it will also update in our defensive and special teams projections um, but this is an area that you can change a quarterback's interception rate fumble rates are the same thing percentage of carries that result in a fumble uh, in this case a fumble lost is what we're looking for for the percentage of carries so this will again reflect in the defensive special teams turnover projection as well and then into the touchdown section where you have market share of passing touchdowns often the quarterback should get 100 percent here market share of rushing touchdowns where you can divvy this up sometimes the quarterbacks are heavily involved in scoring rushing touchdowns in the case of arizona they are rarely so carson palmer has just one percent as the default but as you move these around you can see the impact it has on the projections it starts to take away touchdown points from each individual player and then the last one is market share of receiving touchdowns so again anything on this page in yellow you are free to edit and as you edit it will impact the projection for the individual player over on week one play estimates this is where again you can change how many total plays you expect a team to run what percentage of those plays will be a passing attempt which will automatically adjust their rushing attempt what percentage of their touchdowns will come via the air which will automatically adjust uh, their rushing percentage as well, and what their what their implied team total is, what you're expecting them to score on that week. So if you think Vegas is really wrong on, let's say, the Atlanta Falcons this week, and Vegas has them for a 25.25 implied team total, but you think they're going to score 30 points, you can adjust that. And with that 30-point allocation adjustment, it will start to adjust the baseline points for these players. You can see here with 30 points scored for the Falcons, Matt Ryan projects for 20.5 DraftKings points. But if we take it down to 25.5, Vegas's projection, he's back down to 19.28 DraftKings points. So as you change uh, the totals or the plays or the percentage of the pass plays and play calling, you will adjust the projection baselines, which will ultimately adjust your projections as a whole. So in this page, there's only four editable columns, the team total, how many points you think they're gonna score, the total plays, how many plays you think they're gonna run. If they're gonna be a team that's gonna play very fast that week, you can increase the expected plays. If you think they're going to be pass heavy, you can increase and move them over to a more pass heavy team and you'll see that will automatically adjust their rush percentage and the number of pass plays and run plays that they're running on a given week. Touchdown percentage, you can also adjust what percentage of their touchdowns that they're expected to score are gonna come via the air versus on the ground. So New England is a team that's always a good one to focus on with this. Some game plans, they get really run heavy and LeGarrette Blunt is gonna get a lot of opportunities. And sometimes they're really pass heavy. And last year we saw guys like Deion Lewis uh, heavily involved. And on those run heavy game scripts, maybe you wanna drop their pass TD percentage down to 50%. You think the touchdowns are gonna be even on both sides. And you can adjust that and see how the projection goes. On, on a game like Arizona on the road, we've got 65% as the default, but you can certainly adjust as you go. And basically what you're able to do here is by adjusting the expected points scored and the expected plays per game, along with the pass percentage and how their TDs are allocated, you can start shifting the projections pretty significantly. If you give teams more plays, their players are obviously gonna have more opportunities to accrue points. The baselines for the projections are gonna go up. If you take their plays down or you take their points scored down as a team and the projections are going to come down. This allows you to test a lot of different scenarios and is really, really integral in terms of building GPP lineups because you can put together a, a game that you think is going to maybe turn into a shootout. Maybe Vegas is underrating that game. So, you know, Detroit and Indi Indianapolis is the game in week one that Vegas is targeting for a shootout with 51 and a half points. But let's say it gets really crazy and you think it's going to be, you know, 34 31 for Indianapolis. You can see how that would affect the individual projection baselines for the Detroit and Indianapolis players. And obviously, if Detroit scores 31 points, you're going to see a lot more fantasy points for each of these individual players. You'll also note on the projection play page, we have some players highlighted in red, and that just means they're an injury question mark. The, these projections will continue to be updated our baselines during the course of the week as we get more injury information. But Eric Ebron currently uh, just returned to practice on Monday. Brandon Pettigrew was cut from the team, so he's been removed, although he was in our very original baselines. So a guy that is uh, filled in the background in red is no longer on the team, but players that are highlighted in red are potential injury situations that we're going to monitor. 
We'll move ahead to the defensive and special teams projections page. We'll skip projections. We'll come back to that in a second. On the defensive and special teams projections page, there's only one column that you can highlight, which, which you can edit, which is projected sack percentage. But that's a little bit misleading because, as we noted, if you change the projection baselines for the quarterbacks that these defenses are facing, it will adjust interceptions. Same thing with fumble rates. If you adjust those, it'll start to uh, adjust those in here. And then from there, you can put uh, the projected sack percentage that you think for each individual matchup, and if also the implied totals, which you can change on the week one play estimates here, will filter in here. And this will generate a projection in terms of the number of sacks, the number of fumbles, interceptions, and ultimately how that translates to points. Now, once you've set all the different baselines that you have in this in this format, you've gone through each team that you want to edit. And those of you who are meticulous will probably go through every team, but some of you might just want to test out an individual projection and see how it responds because you're really interested in how, you know, a team like Detroit, if they played really fast in this game, if the no huddle pace that they started in the preseason carries over in the regular season, what would that look like? Once you've tested all those things, you can go to the projections page. And the projections page just houses all of the information that you've adjusted. And on this page, you can sort in all sorts of different ways. So you can sort by position. You can look at, just give me all of the quarterbacks and all the quarterback projections will, will populate. You can say, give me all the projections and we'll go back to all the different projections. You can sort by FanDuel points or by DraftKings points. You can sort, sort by points per dollar to try to identify values. So if you really wanted to look for, let's say, the best tight end value on DraftKings, well, you go over to position, you sort by tight end, and then you go over to DK points, and you sort largest to smallest, and look, Vance McDonald looks like the best value on DraftKings. Now, he might not be the best value on FanDuel at 4,700. There might be somebody that's better than him there. We can check that simply by sorting FanDuel largest to smallest, and it turns out Vance, Vance McDonald is still a very good value on FanDuel at his current rate. Now, if you moved Vance McDonald on the San Francisco 49ers, if you moved his target market share down to 15%, let's say you think he's going to score, he's going to get a lot less targets than we're projecting, you'll notice he's no longer such a strong value. So these, these sheets are all intertwined, and as you make adjustments to the different projection baselines, they will flow through to your overall projections. And then from here, you can start sorting through and trying to identify a couple key plays at each position, either using the points per dollar method or just sorting by the overall point scorers at the position. Uh, in this case, we've got Jordan Reed as the highest scoring projected tight end in week one. But this is, this is an easy way to kind of go through, edit your projection baselines, edit the team totals and the number of plays you're expecting uh, the players to, to get. And from there, you get projections. And it's a, it's a great way to play throughout the week, to build different scenarios and build lineups around different scenarios. If you think games are going to play fast, uh, those, are, those are situations you might want to target. But we're really excited about this tool. We think it gives you uh, the user a lot of flexibility in your ability to generate your own lineups and do a lot of research on your own. Certainly our defaults are gonna be available to you Every week of the season, we're going to continue to update those throughout the week as we get new information. And we will have a, a version of this available, a web version of this available to do all of this online. But if you want to save all of the edits you made and different things like that, it might make sense to just do it in Excel anyway so you can save the file and then edit around those uh, on each given week. So we're really excited about this tool. We hope you guys get a ton out of it. We think it's a great way to put the projections in your own hands and to be able to generate your own customizable projections while having us to hold your hand in case you want to use our baselines when building lineups. So that's going to be it for uh, the demo on the customizable projection tool. We hope all of you really love it and check it out and give us a lot of feedback. If you want to leave feedback for us, you can email in to help at dailyroto.com and we'll take any and all feedback on this product. Thanks so much for listening and have a great day.